Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be making another bao recipe. If you've missed my previous bao recipes, I'll put links down below. I've tasted bao, I've made steamed baos before, but today I'm making a bao that's going to look, hopefully, like one of these little tangerines. I love these little fruits. They're one of my favorites. I love this time of year, particularly because I can find these mandarins. The ones with the leaves are my favorite. Not only are they just so stinking cute, but they are just so tasty and delicious. They're tangy, they're sweet, but most importantly, they are flavorful. Love, love, love this citrus. And today I'm gonna to be trying to replicate this gestalt, but in the form of a bao. Bao is simply the Chinese word for bun, and there are so many permutations of baos, filled with different kinds of fillings, steamed versions, different shapes, baked versions, glazed ones. They are all delicious. Today I'm gonna to be making dou xiao bao, which is a steamed bun that is filled with sweetened red bean paste. When I was a kid, my favorite baos were the baked versions. We would go to San Francisco. I grew up in California once or twice a year, but usually around this time of year, which is the Lunar New Year, and my mom would pick up baos for my brother and I, our family. I like the pork-filled ones, the chashu baos. I also like the coconut baos, coconut cream baos, bolo bao, which was the bao that had the cookie crumb topping. Mm, to this day, it's one of my favorite baos. The inspiration and the recipe I'm going to be using today comes from Private Citrus. I follow them on Instagram. Beautiful page with all kinds of beautiful baked goods, including this amazing looking tangerine bun. What's so lovely about it is that you can peel it as if you were peeling a citrus and inside you'll see the white bun inside. It looks just like a tangerine. It's just incredible. So I saw it and I said, I need to try to attempt making that. So in a large bowl, I'm gonna add about 150 milliliters of milk. This is 170, I'm reserving just a little bit. We may or may not need the extra milk. So set that aside. On top of that, we're gonna add six grams of instant yeast. That's about one teaspoon and one teaspoon of sugar. Now I'm just gonna whisk that together. I'm using instant yeast. If you only have dry active yeast, you're gonna to have to do a little conversion online. We've got one gram of salt, which is about a half teaspoon. And we've got five grams of butter. It's about a half teaspoon. 300 grams of all-purpose flour. That's about three cups. And I'm using this flour here, and it's a low gluten wheat flour, and it's specifically for bao making. Okay, so just give this a stir to incorporate all of the flour. And it looks like I might need a little bit more milk. So I'll add a little bit more. So Carmen says this is totally optional, but you can add two grams of baking powder for a fluffier bao, about a half teaspoon. I'm gonna continue kneading that into a dough. So there's our ragged, shaggy dough ball. And we're gonna let this rest for 15 minutes, let the flour absorb that water. So we're gonna take the dough ball and cut about a quarter or 110 grams off. Then take four drops of orange paste food coloring. We're gonna knead that in until you get a bright ball of dough that looks like Play-Doh. Place it in a bowl, cover it, and let it proof for about 20 minutes. So here is our bright fluorescent orange ball. It looks just like the color of a tangerine. Isn't that great? I'm using this can of pre-made red bean paste. It's made by Morinaga. I really like it. We're gonna weigh out 10 15 gram balls and roll them between your palms so they're nice and round, and then cover them with plastic wrap and set them aside. Now we are ready to shape our baos. First thing we're gonna do is take the orange dough and divide it into 10 equal pieces. These should each weigh about 11 grams. So now we're gonna take each one of these and shape it into a ball. And now with our large piece of dough, we're going to divide that into 10 30 gram balls. Now we are ready to assemble our baos. We're gonna take our white piece of dough that we measured out, 30 grams, and we're going to flatten it till it's about three inches in diameter. Now we're gonna take our rolling pin and we're just gonna thin out the edges. This will make the pleating a little bit easier because the dough will be thinner. And now we should have a little belly right in the middle. Now we're gonna take our ball of bean paste, place it right in the middle, go all the way around, pinching, 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 using our index finger. We're just gonna go around and pinch, 
pinch, pinch, pinch, pinch, pinch, all the way around, sealing in the bean paste. Like that. And then I'm going to turn it over, round it out a bit, and that is going to be the inside of our bow. Now we've got our beautiful little orange piece, and this one we're going to flatten out completely. So this is going to be the skin of the bow. And we're just rolling this one out nice and flat. Now placing that in our hand, we're going to take the bow that we just completed, place that inside, and then wrap the orange skin around it. Just pinching again as you go around. You may not completely cover the entire bow, but that's okay, because that's going to be underneath. Just do the best you can. Go around and pinch, around and pinch. The cutest little orange parcel ever. Not very pretty on that side, but that's okay, because we're gonna turn it over and da-da. Again, we're gonna round it out on the countertop with our hands, and then we're gonna place it on a square of parchment paper. So stinking cute. Look how cute these are. So now we're gonna cover these and we're gonna allow these to rest. We're gonna take a little spare piece of dough and this is going to be the indicator of when our fermentation process is complete. We're gonna drop it into some water. Oh, and look, it already floats. So this is telling me that the fermentation process is done. Next, we need a place for the stem. So we're gonna take a toothpick and insert one in each bow. And then we're gonna steam these on medium heat for about eight minutes. We're gonna turn off the heat and then we're gonna use a chopstick to prop up the lid. And that will allow the steam to leave slowly and prevent the bows from collapsing. All right, my lovelies, I am back. So, shape my bows, I've seen my bows. Da da! Yeah! <laughs> They're so cute. I am so, so, so happy with how these turned out. Now to complete the illusion, we're gonna take actual tangerine stalks and leaves and place them right in the center of our bow. Oh, it's gonna be so cute. So there's a real beautiful tangerine. I'm gonna remove this little stalk. See that? Take the toothpick out and then replace it with <laughs> a tangerine stem. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. <laughs> Look, that looks so, so good. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I am so, so happy about this. This is the definition of verisimilitude and we'll do another one and just put it in like that. Look at that. <laughs> now we're probably gonna taste these but I don't want to tuck into them because they're so stinking cute. Look at them. They're so beautiful. They look just like citrus down to the sheen and the little kind of pocked mark surface. Those little wrinkles kind of give them away, but the leaves make them look so real. I love it, <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Alrighty, but how do they taste? Let's find out. Before we tuck into this, let's see if we can peel it. Went to so much effort to put that extra layer on top. Let's see if it's actually peelable. Oh, this is so exciting. Okay, take this out. <laughs> this, is the, this is the best, the best. Look at this. I am peeling my bow. <laughs> I'm peeling, it's working. Oh my gosh, look, it's totally working. It's working, oh my gosh, I'm so happy about this. Look, it's peeling like a tangerine. <laughs> Look at this. It looks just like a tangerine, like I'm peeling a tangerine, but it's not. Ready, here we go. <laughs> ah, it's so great, look, yep. It's an actual bun. Oh, yes. Let's give this a taste. Itadakimasu. Delicious. Mm. Fluffy, tender, filled with the 
red bean paste filling. If you don't like red bean paste, you're not gonna like these because that's the star here. That's the flavoring of these buns. It's that slightly beany, sweetened flavor. Delicious. As a child, I wasn't a huge fan, I have to admit, but now I love it. The bun recipe is delightful and exactly how I remember. Airy, fluffy, slightly chewy, just a little bit sweet. Lovely. Mm -hmm. And this skin is amazing. Just a delightful, delightful experience. <laughs> and it even has the kind of like toughness and chew that I imagine a citrus peel would have. I mean, this is just out of sight. Nadia each level. I mean, this is a phenomenal recipe. If you follow it to a T, you too can enjoy the beauties of this. <laughs> just, just magic. Happy Lunar New Year to you, and I hope you enjoy that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs>